here to talk about Resident Evil Retribution. I came out of the cinema about three hours ago. Um, been trying to rack my mind uh, about how Paul Anderson keeps messing up the Resident Evil franchise. Well, he does it again and again and again. Um, and this time he's done it, oh, several times over. He's really done it. Um, and he's also likes to play mind games with you in this one. Uh, and I'll tell you how. Uh, by the way, I am going to be talking a lot about this movie for a little while here, and there will be quite a bit, there's definitely going to be spoilers. So, if you haven't seen the movie already and want to see it, God help you. But no, really, don't listen. But if you want to listen anyway, out of complete curiosity, that's fair enough. Um, like I was, and like I went to see the movie out of complete curiosity, like I seen all the rest of the movies out of complete curiosity. I only watch these movies for one reason, just to see what he does to mess them up. And he does it every single time. The only time, the closest time he ever had to not mess up a Resident Evil movie was the first one. Because it stayed away from the franchise. It stayed away from the, the main characters. Uh, it actually did a decent enough, uh, not a great job, not a good job, but a decent enough job. You know, a lot of people hate that movie. I know some people who really hate all the movies. Um, I, yeah, I hate the movies. I hate what the movies are doing to the um, franchise. Uh, a lot of people say they love these films, and they, they, it makes, to be honest, they weren't even going to make another one after, I think, the third one, but there's so much fan feedback of these movies that they couldn't help but make another one. I mean, the amount of people are on their Facebook page alone is crazy. How, I don't even know if any of these people are actually fan of the, fans of the games. I mean, I can't say nothing. I go and pay to get into these movies, which pretty much supports the movie and makes the movie get another one be made. Not out of my own pocket, obviously, but, you know, I'm someone who contributes to it. Like, I'm wearing... Uh, I even went tonight wearing an umbrella t-shirt. Fair enough. I didn't know I was going to go see this movie tonight. Uh, I actually had my umbrella t-shirt on today anyway, so I thought, I looked at my t-shirt and went, ah, what the hell, I'll go and see what they do to ruin it. But I'll show my own support to the games in my own way. And you know, rub this movie a new asshole. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, by the way, you, you're probably wondering, you know, you never hear any movie talk from me really on here. If you are someone who listens to my videos, uh, yeah, I say listens because uh, I don't show my face or anything in these videos. I will someday. I will someday. But for now, you know, I just like to talk, you know, talk and give an audio. I'm not really someone... I don't have anywhere to really show to you know, to give you a proper video, but whenever I get something set up, I'll definitely get something going. But for now, audio, take it or leave it. So let's start off with this movie. Um, I'm going to be in quite a few video game movies soon, but I'm going to start off saying, Anderson, you've done it again. You've completely shattered the hopes of so many Resident Evil fans by giving us another load of your table scraps. And, uh... No, these movies aren't really table scraps. They're more like his own personal wife porn collection. Uh, I think these movies are just... They completely glorify uh, his wife and to, to have a wank bank in his room. Uh, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Mila Jovovich. I actually quite like her as an actress. I really love fulfillment, and she was a very, very great actress. In the, not great, oh, she was a good actress. In the, I liked her in Zoolander and other movies too. But I think that uh, Paul Anderson's just doing a Tim Burton when it comes to that, like how he does with, you know, his wife and Johnny Depp. <sighs> yeah, I used to love Tim Burton, but then I, I don't know. He went down the hell so fast to me. Lots of people out there going boo boo to me and everything else for not doesn't Tim Burton. But seriously, Alice in Wonderland. If you like that movie, there's you know you oh, just go to hell. Um, Anyway, uh, right. Where do I start with this film? Well, let's start from the start. The opening sequence. Uh, the opening sequence, uh, well, okay, I will say this. I will put this out right in front of everything else. The 3D in this movie is quite good. I actually quite like the 3D in this movie, and I hate 3D. I absolutely hate 3D. Um, I think 3D it is... Oh. <laughs> Overused, pointless, and oh, just stupid. It's, it's a fad that should have ended a long time ago. Uh, it, it was... It's just... Uh, I hate it. It gives everyone headaches. 
uh, tonight I had to take my glasses off several times just to, just to take my eyes off the screen because my head was pounding. Uh, people who wear glasses cannot even see 3D. And there's a lot of people in the world who wear glasses. Um, well, I'm sure some do, but not at all. A lot of my friends who wear glasses cannot see 3D. Cannot see a 3D movie because of it. Anyway, moving on. The movie. The opening sequence. If you've seen Resident Evil Afterlife, the opening sequence is backwards. Uh, what happens at... Well, okay, I say backwards, but... It starts off with Alice in the water. Then it shows you're going up out of the water in reverse. And then the sequence all happens in reverse in slow motion. Where it's like the helicopter's coming down on the on the ship at the end of Resident Evil Afterlife. Shooting down explosions, blah blah. All slow motion reverse. I have to say, it looks pretty impressive in 3D. It actually looks really good in 3D. Especially there's a part where it shows you the guys who are like going down on ropes from the helicopters. Uh, and they actually look <laughs> it looks really well in 3D. Um, but uh, the, the, the opening sequence is made completely pointless five minutes later. I'll get to that. So the next thing that shows you is Alice's monologue telling you that she's Alice and she has to work for Umbrella. The virus happened, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And talks with the Red Queen. And the Red Queen is the main villain in this movie. Uh, yeah, they brought her back. And she's more annoying than she ever was before. Um, she's just really annoying. And she says her line, you're all going to die down here twice in the movie. And the way they present her is just, I don't know, it's just really cheesy and wrong. It's just over the top. This movie is really over the top. So after the opening sequence happens, yeah, and, uh, sorry, the uh, the intro sequence where it tells you her about her, but her, alright, let's be honest, it's the, uh, what's the word? Cut until now. Cut until I say this word. Whenever the exposition sequence is over, it shows you the sequence that you've seen in reverse at the start of the movie all in the right way around. The exact amount, all in normal motion, the right way around, exactly what you've seen at the very start of the movie. Made the opening sequence completely pointless. Stupid. Really stupid. Just completely ruined that. So you've already got loads of filler at the start of the movie. I think that's the first five minutes of the five, six, seven minutes of the movie is completely, you know. Then it opens up with Alice waking up in a bed and being told to wake up, she's going to be late. And the, her kid's going to be late by Carlos. You're thinking, what the hell's going on here? I'm going down having breakfast, which, you know, he spills some coffee in the shirt and she's on beginning a new shirt and she slaps him in the ass and everything. You're thinking, okay, what the hell? My head's being like, yeah. Uh, and then a zombie that's, uh, you know, seems to be infected with La Plaga, which I don't know. I don't know if Paul Anderson even knows what La Plaga is, but he re he uses it completely wrong. So a zombie comes in and infects Carlos with La Plaga, and then uh, Alice and her kid try to escape and everything, and they go down the street and run into Michelle Rodriguez. You know, she was in the first movie. You're wondering what the hell. Uh, again, another mind fuck, and then she's like drives down, and then they and they crash, and then they and then Michelle Rodriguez is still in the car. Uh, they get out, and then uh, Alice and the the kid Becky, as her name is in this, get out of the car, and they go into this house, and then all of the La Plaga zombies going after them, and there's a big fight sequence. She uh, she hides the kid in this closet, so she goes out and tries to confront them kills one of them and then I, I can't remember a thing and the next thing is that she wakes up again after being attacked and then she's in this umbrella facility um, and you're wondering okay already I feel like Jackie Chan in that picture where it's like my head is full of fuck you know I'll put the picture up here in front of you now DC but that's exactly how I felt I was like what the hell is going on 
And then she starts getting interrogated by Jill Valentine, you know, because she's got that crap on her chest that's making giving her mind control uh, for the, the whole thing from Resident Evil Five. And yeah, so and 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 whenever Alice doesn't answer right, she um, Jill makes this big, you know, does this computerized noise that. And it hurts her, and it, trust me, it'll hurt you too if you go to see this in the cinema. It's a really loud, annoying noise. It's really, really annoying. It's, it's unbearable. I can understand how she feels on the screen, uh, and they put this noise on several times. One time they put the noise on, like it's just for fun, just to annoy, and uh, it's just over the top. So anyway, um. And after that, uh, this computer override happens, and uh, she, by the way, um, Mila Jovovich is naked in this part, yeah. You know, of course, Paul Anderson had to get her wife naked in the film again, and um, so the, so the um, clothes come out that look like S&M bondage gear, it's like, okay, Paul, you're making it pretty obvious that you want your, your woman wearing this outfit because, you know, you're getting off on it. Uh, uh, so she runs out, and it's the Battle of Tokyo. Uh, okay, so she's in the middle of Tokyo. Tokyo is completely deserted. She gets herself a chain and gets herself a gun uh, from a police car. Then all of a sudden, this computer voice comes on saying, "You know, start test sequence," and all these people come out of nowhere. And the next thing you know, another head fuck sequence. It's the opening to Resident Evil Afterlife, where the girls out in the middle of the street and the Chinaman who comes, pa- oh, sorry, Japanese man, sorry. Uh, comes past with the umbrella and um, the girl attacks him and you're, and you're like okay so this is exactly what happened at the start of Resident Evil Afterlife this is the opening sequence what's going on and Alice is there in the middle of it and then the zombies then go to attack her and she runs back in the facility because it opens up again for some strange reason and she goes into this other um, after uh, at this um, obligatory fight sequence for the zombies or La Plaga or whatever Paul Anderson seems to be think he's using in this movie um, uh, then you have her going into this lab where it elaborately opens up with the umbrella symbol bit by bit and it goes on for a while until the place is bright and you're like okay get on with it we understand it's an umbrella facility come on and then these guys come up and they're all dead and uh, out of the ground, you know, with their own computer bases, and then these guns come out of the ground, and she's all very happy to see all these awesome guns, and throws away the gun she has. Uh, and then Ada Wong comes in. Ada Wong introduces herself, and Alice says, "Yes, I know who you are. You're uh, work for Umbrella. You're you are the number one to Albert Wesker. What makes you think I'm not going to kill you right now? Uh, because we're not." And Ada says, "Because we're not working for Umbrella anymore. Me or Wesker?" And you're thinking, "What?" Then Wesker comes on the screen. Again, head fuck. How the hell did he survive? Then again, you can say that about Resident Evil 1, the game, can't you? <laughs> if you play the games, you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, so, you know, you, you, no explanation to how he survived that. At least in the games, to give him an explanation to how he survived Resident Evil 1. Um, if you're wondering what that's about, play Resident Evil Code Veronica X if you haven't. Play it. Um, you can get it on Xbox Live or PlayStation Network download. But yeah, so <sighs> you're wondering here what's going on. So Wesker says that he needs Alice to help save mankind because they're on the verge of extinction. So Wesker turns good guy, turns face, and it makes you wonder why. What's going on here? This doesn't make any bloody sense. Um, Ada, you know, and then her, uh, like, are meant to help each other to get out of this facility. Because Tokyo, Moscow, everywhere you see in this facility are all under big, uh, is all under Russia in these big massive domes. And, uh, so, yeah, they're meant to escape the facility. And, and, uh, Wesker says, I'm sending in a team to help you. This team consists of, consists of five people. Leon Kennedy. Barry Burton, uh, Luther West, who was the guy who survived the last movie at the end of the sewers, um, then uh, these two other guys, 
I think one's called Sergey and the other one's called Tony. I'm just going to call them Expendable 1 and Expendable 2. Because you know, they're nobodies, they're going to die. Then again, in Paul Anderson's case, no matter who they are in the films, they're most likely going to die. We don't know what happened to Chris or um, Clara either. There's no explanation to what happened to them. Alice asks what happened to them, to Jill. But Jill doesn't give him a reason, doesn't say nothing. And so it's like, yeah, well, they're, they're probably dead. Like, we give a shit, because Prison Break, you know, yeah, pff, who gives a shit? Because uh, he was not Chris Redfield. I don't care what anyone says, he was not Chris Redfield. Um, so, uh, then, the next thing you see is Leon and his group of lovely expendables, as I like to call them, are going down to the uh, Umbrella base to help Ada and Alice. Uh, so they set some charges above it, and then go down this big massive elevator shaft. Next thing then, you see Alice and uh, Ada going back outside to the Tokyo uh, Tokyo testing facility, where the Red Queen pops up like this bloody, I don't know, computerized mission intelligence base, you know, basically saying these targets are, you know, these are targets, they need to be attacked, you know, get the BOWs out, and this happens quite a few, quite a few times through the, full, through the film, by the way, and it gets really annoying, kind of like a, an annoying NPC in the game, like, Ashley from Resident Evil 4, for example, or hell, even uh, Navi from fucking Ocarina of Time. It, it just it just gets to that. Oh God, will you shut up? Stage. Uh, at least it did for me. Um, so then, Alice and Ada are outside in Tokyo, and um, the two BOWs coming after them. The two of the big um, of the are the executioners from the Resident Evil 5 game, which again makes no sense because, well, they're meant to be based in Africa and that was because of Ouroboros and that isn't even in the, the, the games or the films, sorry, I mean, um, I don't know. Uh, again, it's just another mess made by Anderson. So then they fight them too. After putting loads of bullets in their heads and through them uh, and a wee bit of a, a fight sequence, they end up, uh, and uh, some 3D effects of like the hammers being thrown at you, just sort of like the uh, what happened in the, the last Resident Evil movie. Just obligatory shit coming towards the screen 3D. Um, uh, you have, they end up being killed, crushed by a car, and that's them dead. After all the bullets that they've taken, I don't know how that car killed them. Anyway, moving on, it should be uh, Leon and all in the Moscow part. And uh, there be and then the Red Queen pops up again. Oh, bloody release the La Plaga. They call it the Last Plagas. It's actually pronounced La Plaga. It's Spanish after all. So however you pronounce it, Last Plagas, La Plaga. That's released, and it's all a bunch of Russian zombies <laughs> with guns. So it's pretty much like it's like they're doing a Call of Duty thing, where it's like the, the Nazis with zombies, you know, the Nazi zombies in Call of Duty. It was all right, and it, then it, then this action sequence takes place where Leon and uh, Barry and Luther and the two Expendables are all behind the cover, you know, firing out at them, and they're firing back, and it's a really boring, boring action scene. Then it goes back to Ada and Alice who are in the town, you know, in the we the city street. Where in Raccoon City, where that what happened earlier on in the movie, you know, the bit where the bit where um, the it was the wife and the kid, you know, Alice was the wife and everything. So it's the back in that part, and they go into the out of all the houses they pick to go into, they go into the house where the wee girl is. But I think it's because Alice said she said she seen someone at the window. But it's like if you see something at the window, why why are you going to be there? Why don't you just move on through it and get to the next part? But she has to go in anyway, because you know the the script says so. So she moves on in, and uh, yeah, then <laughs> the La Plaga zombie comes out and attacks her, and she kills it. And then the kid comes out thinking that you know Alice is her mum when she's not, and the mum's there dead in front of them, you know, and apparently the mum's a clone, and the girl is a clone as well, of loads of clones who are all used to be tested, so pretty much what they're saying is all these characters in the movies are all cloned, used several times throughout these testing facilities to get different results. 
the honest, they're always going to get the same results. People are going to die in turn. So, why even clone that many in the beginning? I don't, I don't know. I really don't understand. I don't understand why they have to have so many clones. Because later on in the film, it shows you they have loads. Apparently there's 50 copies of each person. Why do you need to do that many bloody tests? I know you, one test, one video for every single city that you're looking to do it in. To sell it to different people, to different countries. Understandable. There you are. You don't need that many people. I just don't get it. Um, they're expecting different results, maybe? Uh, there, there never is any different results. Unless someone like Alice is involved or something like that, I guess. But, either way. So the guy confuses Alice to be her mum, uh, Ada warns her against it, and then come up number one, uh, Rain and Carlos, who are all meant to be dead from the previous films, Rain and number one were meant to be dead in Resident Evil 1, and uh, Carlos died in Resident Evil Extinction, but they're all alive, again, because they're clones. And Rain, by the way, is the, Mila jo uh, is the Michelle Rodriguez, sorry. Um, character, except she's the one who's the umbrella operative, like in Resident Evil, the first Resident Evil movie. So, anyway, what happens then outside is we've got a gunfight again, and Ada then is, and escapes, and Alice and her make their separate ways. And I think Alice then believes that Ada's dead, but you know, she really isn't. Uh, so th and then after that there, they run into the other Michelle Rodriguez, which is the one from the city earlier on, which is the good one, and they, they come up with a stupid obligatory line where Alice shows her how to use a gun, but she's all, oh, I, I, I voted against the NRA, I, I didn't want guns and stuff, and, but obviously these are imprinted memories, and, you know, and Alice says, you know, here, this is how you do it, and shows her how to use a gun. And then she says, after she uses it and fires off like a, a couple of rounds against the wall, she said, there you go, you know you're officially a badass. Stupid line. Uh, like a lot of stupid lines in these movies. And so, yeah, after that then, Alice says to the kid that she's going to move on, you know, she's going to go out and the kid says, I love you, but, you know, Alice obviously never met the kid before, she doesn't know what to say back, and then she runs off. She gets... And then it shows you back to Leon and everyone that are being attacked. And then out of nowhere, this big, the big massive uh, liquor starts to attack them. Like the liquor that was in the first movie. Except bigger, bigger and bulkier. bulkier. And uh, so uh, Leon and all uh, run away from that. Uh, well, then that gets hit by Alice, who's in a Chrysler uh, car. You know, she basically runs on it, so you know, knocking her out of the way. Then uh, gets them to go inside the car, and then they run off, and then the zombies are coming after them in their jeeps and stuff and you know the, the Russians um, then it moves on to the again the liquor following them and then after a while the liquor gets uh, stopped by the car going in through the uh, the car actually crashing in through all these here different pillars they bring the, you know, the ceiling down on top of it but it doesn't stop it I'm going to stop talking about the movie for a while because Thinking about it, it's actually the loss of the movie. The movie is fuller. I'm just going to talk to you about certain bits now. Uh, one, Leon was made completely wrong. They they got some guy from uh, Russia to play him. You could tell he was not putting on a good accent at all. His accent was very, very, th very Russian. You can tell he was trying to put a trying to put on an American accent, but it was failing. Um, he looked a bit like the part and all, but that's about it. Uh, it just wasn't Leon for me. Um, Barry, the guy who plays Barry is actually a very good actor, uh, Kevin Durant, he was in a few movies before that, like Wolverine, uh, he played the blob, and uh, he's actually a good actor, he's just in shit movies. Uh, Luther West, uh, he actually ends up dying, obviously, he's in, uh, so does actually Barry, Barry ends up dying as well. Um, not even in a cool way. They try to make it in a cool way, but he just ends up being really executed more than anything, and stupidly. He actually goes out and opens up his arms twice to be shot. The second time he could have used his more, you know, he used his gun again, but if it had more balls, if it didn't have any more balls, fair enough. 
But instead, he just opens the arms like, no, oh, go ahead, kill me. Like, I give a shit. Okay, fair enough. Bang. <laughs> I always remember Barry Burton's uh, acting from the first game. It's just like, I have this. Uh, it's just funny as hell. Because um, it's just really is William Shatner stuff. But brilliant at the same time. So he's a great character. Um, so in, in the movie, um, yeah, they move on and uh, but a couple more action sequences where Jill and the other Umbrella operatives, you know, coming after them and I don't know, Jill seems so vacant in this movie. It's like she's there but she isn't really it, it doesn't feel like she's there half the time. Um and she's got that thing on her chest, there's a big massive fight sequence near the end. And Michelle Rodriguez's character Rain, you know, she injects the La Plaga into herself. And I'm thinking to myself, why? Why would you want to inject that in yourself? It's not going to do anything for you. Apart from maybe make you take a couple of more bullets before you die. But in this movie, Paul Anderson seems to think that La Plaga can make you invincible. And make your body spit out bullets. Okay. No, it doesn't. It doesn't do that at all. I don't know what the hell, where he got that from. Um, so... You got a bit of a face seat going on there, and that's fair enough. And then near the end, it pretty much takes you to the White House, which is in ruins, and Wesker's there. Wesker's in the in in the uh, main room in the White House, uh, you know, in, in the Oval Office, and sitting in the president's chair and all. And you're thinking, uh, why do you kind of expect this? But he's actually there trying to win a war against the Red Queen. So Wesker injects. Alice with the T virus again, so she has the powers because he needs her to help him to save the world. What? Wesker's still a good guy. I expected some turn face here, but no, he was still a good guy by the end of the movie. And, um, well, then at the end, it's like there's these big, ma you know, big massive fight happening between POWs and the humans and. It's just opening up for another movie. <laughs> um, it's just, oh god. If what I have told you already has not put you off wanting to see this film, I don't know. I, I, it's, the film is very anticlimactic. Very anticlimactic. It's it's done as a, I don't know. It's done more like a, the movie feels very cheesy. Very cheesy. It's like it's. Try, it's like trying too hard and coming off really bad uh, it's actually ex as much as I hated Extinction and I do hate Extinction it's the worst of the Resident Evil movies this one's very close to being the worst too it really is it is terrible um, some of the actors that are in this movie I don't understand why uh, they would even do it, I guess. They just needed parking tickets to be paid off. So Michelle Rodriguez, like you, know, she's a decent actress. Um, the guy who plays Wesker, I have to say, I do like him. I think he does a decent job. You know, it's funny to get a Canadian. They play a guy who has a suave kind of accent going on, and but he does a good, decent job, and he even does a decent job in this movie. But the Resident Evil movies are just Paul Anderson's um, personal part in them. Pretty much, and it's all it is. Um, I don't see any point in them. I don't see... I really... I only see the, the movies for one reason, and that's out of complete another curiosity. Maybe I just like inflicted pain on myself and I like seeing these movies because they hurt my head. I don't know, but that's what happens. <laughs> right after that complete rental is movie, I, I'm just going to say, Paul Anderson... I read something not that long ago, I think it was after the last movie came out, where you said that, well, I say you said, it's not like you're going to be listening to this shit, or, well, he, where he said that the reason that the movies are not like the games is because Capcom don't give them enough information and background off the games to let them write a decent script. I'm calling bullshit on that because you have the money to go out and buy yourself a GameCube, an Xbox, or a PlayStation 3. Get yourself a GameCube and an Xbox. Get yourself all the Resident Evil games on the GameCube. 0, 1, 2, 3, Code Veronica X, and 4. 
and then get yourself an Xbox, get yourself Resident Evil 5, and hell, get yourself a copy of Resident Evil 6 that comes out next next week. Which, by the way, I'm damn looking forward to. It should be on its way to me um, very soon because I should I have pre-ordered it, uh, paid for it already. I uh, got myself a Steelbook edition. I am not paying £129 in the UK for the game version of the uh, uh, Needle Bomb box because, to be honest, it's not worth it. I'm not paying that much for a fucking hologram and a bloody hoodie. No way. Not a chance in hell. Um, I get a free t-shirt on mine and only have to pay 40 quid. And that's a Steelbook edition. That's, to me, that's very nice. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So Resident Evil 6. Paul Anderson, you have no excuse. No excuse. I call bullshit on your bloody excuse about why, cat, oh, why you weren't able to make a proper Resident Evil movie. And hell, I think you don't really care, because you're wrecking in a lot of money off these films, and I don't know how. How these people, how you... Any of you who are fans of these movies who are listening to me right now, you're a fan of this movie. That's fair enough. You're entitled to like any movie you want. But if you're a fan of this movie, and you're a fan of the games... Why are you a fan of these movies? Maybe because you're open-minded and or don't take things to heart when people, you know, obviously destroy something. To me, that I think he's obviously destroying a franchise by making these movies. Uh, well, he's not destroying the franchise itself. It's surviving on its own. It's just, this is like a sideline choice if you want to watch it or not. It's kind of like, you know, if you get a side salad with your dinner, do you want to have, here's your main meal, here's your side salad. Would you like to eat your side salad? It's up to you. Fair enough, fair enough, you want to eat your dinner and something you as well, it's like buying a copy of the game. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you don't like, you know, t- tomatoes, or tomatoes, if you like to call them tomatoes, I call them tomatoes, you're not going to eat it, like these movies. Except me, I seem to put it in my mouth and shoot it around a bit and then spit it back out. <laughs> well, uh, okay talk about something good for a change and I'm going to put a wee bit of a shout out here to Alpha Omega Sin I am completely back on it, I mean me, he put up a video recently talking about the Resident Evil 2 uh, HD remake that Capcom were talking about yes I actually read about this before he put up this video I knew that because I read this on Rely on Horror which is a website very good website uh, talk, because they talk about two of my favourite t- uh, games calls, uh, game titles which is Resident Evil and Castlevania two awesome games Oh, plus Silent Hill, also a big fan of Silent Hill, but I think Resident Evil Castlevania is my all-time favorite franchise. Resident Evil is close to my, you know, close to being my second, and Silent Hill's down there somewhere. Not, but Resident Evil, it's something near the top. And uh, Resident Evil Two Remake, bring it on! I would say yes, I would back it 100. percent I would make fake profiles to pretend to get all, you know, to put in petitions against it as well. I would. I would do whatever I can for a remake of Resident Evil 2 to come out because the remake of the first Resident Evil that came out on the GameCube was fantastic. It was brilliant. Very well done. And I would love to see that done with a second one. The Resident Evil game, however, I would love to, if they do do that, it would be great then if they did a third one. Hell, they could even do a mixed second and third one because they pretty much happen around the same time in the timeline anyway. Or even mix it up a little bit and even have Jill come in and meet, actually meet up with Chris and Claire for a bit or even see them from across the street. That would be pretty cool because it pretty much happens around the same time. But when it comes to the Alpha Omega Center, watch this video on getting that backed up and everything else. And I, I completely agree and I would back them up 100% on that. To get that game, uh, to definitely get that game out on shelves, by the way, and I would love to see a collector's edition of that, not this download shit. Even though I, I don't mind downloading it, but I prefer physical copies. I don't want to see this download crap that's coming out in the future. They're talking about consoles becoming downloads only. That's a load of crap. That's just because Capcom and EA don't like people buying secondhand games. A load of crap. Keep the economy going, for God's sake, people. Oh, but they're taking money off us and we should get money for it. No, you don't. You got your fucking money. You got your money already for the game. Someone already bought the game. You got your money for that copy. What, so what? Someone that decides to get themselves a cheaper copy and not buy another first-hand copy of the game? So you're, you feel like you're being robbed? Fuck yourselves. 
Because the other day, we're not, we're not talking economy. Not that many gamers can actually afford games. I'm lucky I can afford my copy of Resident Evil 6 next week. I don't have a job. I'm looking for a job. I want a job. But they're not easy to come by, especially in the town I'm in. The town I'm in, there's less jobs happening all the time. I went up today to ask my friend if there's any jobs going to his place. And though he turned around and told me, no, in fact, there's people losing jobs at our place. That's all that's happening here. I went online to look for a job today. There was like three jobs up there, and there was like 50 for every other city but here. So, yeah, I, I just moved back to the city a couple of months ago, and I think it's one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. Capcom and EA, stop being so fucking greedy. Then again, I'm sure that's why Capcom don't really mind Paul Anderson making these movies, because, hell, I'm sure they're making a mint off them. But Resident Evil 6, Capcom, do it. Don't be doing another Mega Man Legends 3 on us. We're saying, oh, it's the fans' fault if we don't make this bullshit. It's real. I call bullshit in that. The fans were 100% behind you. They would have paid you more than on shelf price to make sure that came out. I'm sure. I know for a fact that's what would have happened. People would have paid for their asses for that. But now you screwed them. And see if you do the same with Resident Evil 2. HD remake, bring it out. Don't be screwing us over. We're the fans. We're the ones who people who keep you in your jobs, keep you making games because we buy them. Treat us like you used to treat us back in the day. Then again, I am talking about the people who made Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Basically, every single edition of one bloody game that they can. Just to squeeze more money out of you. That's what DLC was back <laughs> like back in the day. We, we, you didn't get DLC, you just got a full new game with a wee bit extra. And you had to full, pay full price for it. Back in the Super Nintendo and Mega Drive game days, they, that was not cheap. Those were times when games were 70 pounds, 60 pounds, not 30 or 40 like they are today. Wow. I mean, I remember my mum going out and buying me Mortal Kombat 2 and it being £55. I was like, fuck? The price of that? Ugh. I was so used to buying second-hand games in a lot of shops, I didn't care. Until I, I was one of the very few first-hand games I've ever seen or bought. Hell, my console wasn't even first-hand at the time. Had you seen the price of consoles back then? <laughs> but yeah, Resident Evil. And Resident Evil 6 comes out next week. I played the demo, I'll, uh, the demo's good, but the controls, I'm still getting used to that. I like how it's done, but I need to get used to it. But anyway, that's my thoughts on Resident Evil Retribution. Um, all I can say is, I think it's a pile of shit. <laughs> I really do. Um, I wasted six pounds on it tonight, I really wish I didn't. Um, Alright, fair enough. It was not you know, got me out of the house for a while, which I'm, I'm always appreciative of, because there's not much to do around here. But, oh, no, not again. A friend of mine is expecting me to go next week along with them. I may go again just for a lot. No, no, actually, no. I'm not going again. No, it's like that. No, I, uh, no completely boycotting seeing this one again. I've already got my head hurt tonight watching this. And I mean, I actually literally, physically, got my head hurt watching this. If you're looking for a rate score out of ten, I'll give it a. Um, oh, I'll give it a. F what can I give it a three? I'll give it a three. The three points I'll give it are for one, the three D is good. Two, some of the actions, you know, pretty decent. Three. Some of the card. Ada, I'll give Ada, three to Ada because Ada looked good. She was a decent actress. She uh, was in the red dress. She had her gadgets with her, you know, I think she was played well. I think she was done well. So, yeah, three points. Out of ten. I'm done. Okay, thank you for listening. Um, leave your comments below. Like, dislike. Subscribe. Unsubscribe. <laughs> Do to like. Um, right now, it's... My head is just... Uh, I'm going to play some Resident Evil 6 demo just to wash the taste out of my mouth. Goodbye, take care. Bye.